Happy Halloween, but I didn't get the treat. I got a trick. And October can officially suck a giant bag of dick. So here we are at the doctor's. Uh, they've managed to get me on an emergency appointment. This is just the GP. So I'm going to see what he says and what he thinks is going on with this bicep. I'm genuinely praying to universe this doesn't need surgery. I'm not going to lie, I'm genuinely apprehensive about this. I don't want the surgery. I don't want it to need surgery. I really don't want it to need surgery. So amazingly, the doctor got me in super fast. He tried um, a couple of tests on me, had a feel around, and he is quite sure it is a partial tear of the distal bicep tendon. So what we do now is I have to get uh, an appointment with a fracture clinic, and from there, an ultrasound on it or something like that to see how bad it is and whether it's going to require surgery or not. Anyway, good news. He said the word partial, partial tear, but... Let's see. We'll wait and see um, how how long they're going to take to get me in the factory clinic. Until then, he said, basically, can't do shit. What are you going to do? I'm human. Anyway, I'm going to go try and drive home <laughs> one hour. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. So, yes, if you tuned in already to the crew cast, which is released every Monday. So if you've listened to that on Monday already, you'll already know about this. If you didn't. Links in the description. Make sure that you subscribe. We appreciate all of you. It's a new venture, but it's a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying it. What I'm not enjoying is the fact that I have torn my bicep. To be exact, I have a rupture of the distal bicep tendon. That is the one that connects your bicep to your forearm and helps you do this. Now, this happened after we just got through a whole bout of being ill knocked out for two weeks, got back to training, felt awesome, and I was killing it. Maybe too much. Ran all the way through about a good seven-day stretch of just beasting training, boxing every single day, getting my weights in, getting back to that high-frequency training, and then went up to Manchester to do a my protein kind of boot camp. It's one of the new things that they're launching. If you fans are getting anything for my protein as well and you want to help your boy out, always remember you can use code Lex Fitness and that'll get you at least 37% off, if not more. And there's some special stuff coming actually for Black Friday, so pay attention to that. There's a whole lot of cool stuff going on. We're doing kind of some deadlifting seminars, ab circuits, general Q&As and talking, helping people through things that are finding an issue. And also a boxing class. Now I jumped in alongside one of the coaches there to help with the boxing and I made the fatal error. The fatal error. He decided to teach a Southpaw how to box with me standing in Southpaw. Now, I'm not a Southpaw. Never have been, never will be. Now, if you don't know the difference between it, orthodox is when you have your left foot forward, which is most people are right-handed. Southpaw is when you have your right foot forward because you are left-handed. So we'd run through a whole class and we would do something really simple. We were just running some drills and it was a jab into a hook. So bang, bang. Real easy. Done it a million times before. I switched to Southpaw to show somebody how to do it. So my body's trained to probably throwing about 150 degree hook. You know, it, comes, it has to go quite a way. It has to travel around before it impacts. By switching your hips forward, what it does is probably remove about 20 to 30 degrees of that hook. And because I was teaching somebody how to throw this, I was looking at them instead of the bag. This was my mistake. So as I'm looking at them saying, so you jab and then you hook, not looking at the bag, 
my hook landed way sooner than my mechanics are used to. And I'll show you my left arm because this one's now buggered. As it's hit the bag, rather than connecting with my fist and letting that force and pressure and impact go through the whole arm and it take it all as it should, it's landed early with me not being ready. So the elbow has gone through and what that's done is it straightened the arm out on impact. So it's gone bink. And what that's done is it's loaded the pressure off the bicep onto the tendon, which is the one that you can feel here. In, you can actually hook it, dig your finger out into that big thick tendon there. All the pressure of the punch has gone onto that single tendon and it has gone snap and pinged my bicep up my arm. And I knew immediately, and I mean immediately, that it happened because of the searing pain that shot through the right hand side of my body. The moment it happened, I looked up. I was just praying, please, dear God, don't let that pop and pain be the sound and feeling of my bicep tearing. Another goddamn slam in the face, kick in the dick, fish hook, eyeball poke, flick in the end of the you know what. <sighs> and yet it is truly shit. Now this kind of injury on average happens to two to five people out of every hundred thousand every year. The way that this has happened, the way that it's torn at the base of the bicep rather than the attachments at the top, this is from single moment impact and that is an unusual occurrence and it happens when you take your mind off the ball or if you take a heavy load, you'll see this often um, in deadlifts, big deadlifts, you'll see some guys biceps shooting up their arm as they go to pull and lift and it's because again that load comes off the bicep as the arm goes from a slight bend into suddenly being straight and then and bink, it fires off the bone and you can see the bicep shooting up the arm. The tendons run from the base of the bicep and they connect down to the bones on the forearm. There are actually, even though it looks like one tendon, there are two tendons running, one from the short head and one from the long head. Now, looking at the way my bicep's moving here, you can see in these videos, my bicep is moving abnormally the right one compared to the left in that pose, especially when the arm is out in front. So as I elongate, you can see the bicep elongates. Now, on the right hand side, that also still happens, which means something is still attached. That shouldn't be happening if it was all fully torn away. Now, what I do think has happened is the short head tendon, I think, has either fully ruptured or partially ruptured away, which is making that short head kind of tennis ball up and look a little bit abnormal. And that's what's also causing it to look abnormal and more tennis balled when I do that pose out to the front with the right hand left to right. You can see the left bicep stays down, the right one shoots up. That's not normal and shows us something very wrong. This happened on the Friday. So on the weekend, I left it because it didn't look like it was fully ruptured. Maybe it was just a terrible sprain. And because there wasn't any purple bruising, that was a sign, that, you know, a hopeful sign that it hadn't fully ruptured. Now, the wall has been bruising, obviously, and you can see here in these pictures, there is very clear bruising all along that forearm where you would expect to see if there is damage to that distal tendon. But I was still able to move okay, and the pain started to subside. Even now, I can move my arm relatively freely with no pain. It's only very specific movements where it will suddenly fire off and it's debilitating. But at the moment, it's almost a false sense of security because I can move the arm quite freely. The thing with getting a bicep tear or anything to do with biceps is you need to act relatively quickly. You need to get things done within the first couple of weeks. So what this led me to do is have to get an emergency appointment with the doctors. And I videoed that bit for you. So I've been in my little room, and then the, uh, the guy who would actually do the surgery just came to see me. He looked at straight away and thought, and said, that's gone. And I said, oh, Christ, he went, but let me have a look. So what he did was a grip test with supination and pronation, and I could fight him against both of those with no pain. A little wiggle, and he said, you can still feel maybe the tendons still attached, but that can happen. He said, I think it was called lamination or... Illumination! Or something, I don't know. Where it can still stick, the muscle can still be stuck down with full tear, you can find out. So what I've today is you can see all that yellowing and bruising around where the distal tendon will be attached. The only issue here is this weird little divot, you can see that there, that little divot, that is causing a little bit of concern, so. Mm. Absolutely amazing, so the doctor we got chatting has snuck me in for an MRI scan straight away, which is Amazing, although I'm super lost. He thinks. Could be a full tear, could be not. He was kind of 50-50 that it's going to need surgery or that it might be
torn. But he did say if it's fully torn but not separated from the bone, there could be a chance that it could heal and we'd be all right, we wouldn't need surgery. This is going to decide it, but we've got two days to wait before we find out. Right, let's get This isn't at all off putting. There we go. Cleveland Shrewsbury Hospital. If you go to the factory clinic, dude, that was awesome. So they just fit me in for this crazy looking um, CT scan. Never had anything done like that before. The machine looks like something from an evil doctor's laboratory. So that's been scanned now and uh, about two day wait. I'm really hoping it's the rehab side. So, mm, why did I just use my right arm? <laughs> that's a sock. Who are these people that are losing? Socks and one shoe. Hey, who's getting out of the car, stepping out and just being like, huh? Missing a shoe. And a sock. Huh. It's happened again. Now, Dr. Singh, who dealt with me at the fracture clinic, was amazing. He managed to get me CT scanned and everything done on the day. So we moved super fast. That was on Wednesday. On the Thursday morning, I woke up, I was in a good mood, I felt like my arm was, it, it wasn't hurting as much, it was actually the swelling was starting to subside, I started to see veins coming back through again, I could, I could feel a little bit of a tendon maybe still there, because you know, I couldn't stop poking and playing, I get a phone call, and then it was boom, good morning Mr Griffin, yes sir, sir, um, oh, yeah, just ringing about your surgery next week, I was like, B -b -b what, the who in the what, what? Um, not even had my results back yet, are you, are you sure you're with the right person, he said, yep, I've got you in here for uh, surgery on the 5th of November, World crumble, proper wobble. Good morning, smack. After freaking out and having a cup of tea, I took my mum out to go do some bits and bobs, take my mind off things. And then I got a call from the doctor, Dr. Singh, who's been amazing. And what he'd actually done, he hadn't got the full results back yet from the radiologist. He has seen the CT scans that I took, but he's not a specialist at reading the scans. He's just obviously had a lot of experience seeing them. So what he'd done in the meantime, because he, from what he could see, thought this might need surgery, he's preemptively booked me in on the 5th of November for a repair of this bicep tendon rupture. So, yeah. Uh, he thinks it's torn. He's still actually waiting, well, we are still actually waiting for the results to come in from the radiologist to determine exactly what has happened here because the bicep's not moving in the same way it should normally, but it's also not moving in a way that a total rupture would show. But there's definitely some damage there. And there's definitely, I mean, I felt the tendon pop, but something's definitely torn, ripped and gone. So at this stage where we're at, I have an operation booked in on the 5th of November. If that does have to go ahead, it's going to be surgery to reattach that tendon. And they do is drill the bone, put some holes in the bone. They then anchor the tendon. No, I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me exactly on this, but they basically stitch the tendon to a metal anchor which they feed through the hole they drill in the bone that then latches onto the base of the bone which they then cinch it up against so that it can reattach that is a three to six month full recovery time that's what they tell you minimum you're going to be moving this thing properly for at least six weeks so this is where we're at it sucks it really sucks but here's the thing, it's happened. I can sit here and I can moan and hope and pray. I've done all that. <laughs> the idea of surgery is freaking me out. I haven't had surgery on anything before. Now, Dr. Singh is amazing. The guy is actually in charge of reattaching limbs to people who've had severe injuries. So this to him must be like, I don't know, a jigsaw puzzle at Christmas. And I mean a shitty jigsaw puzzle that you get from a cracker that a five-year-old can do. But to me, it's my right arm. So I'm going to have my little freak out, so I'm pretty sure along the way. Now, I can sit and I can mope and I can quit. Or, for the next six weeks, we can train the shit out of these tricking drumsticks and see how much we can change legs in a six-week timeline. I think that'd be a fun little mini-cutting series from here, just to see what happens. Why not? And then what I'm also going to do is track every day of the rehab with you guys, um, keep you up to date, what's going on, how it's how it's going, and also how you can avoid this happening to you and the rehab. And we'll see how <laughs> we'll see how skinny this right arm gets. And um, 
how quickly I can rehab it. That's where we're at. I do want to say thank you very much to everybody who's messaged me on Instagram and been sending me lovely, lovely messages. You actually don't understand how much that positive energy that you send through has cheered me up and actually picked me up and got me up off the sofa. I sat on that sofa for two days, just nothing, nothing, just depressed about it. Because I'd just come through all that illness and I was back on track and I was really flying in training again. I was enjoying it and bang. Two to five out of 100,000. If that was a lottery thing and it happened to you, you're lucky. I don't feel lucky. But what I do feel is that I have the ability to get through this and the ability to come out stronger and better on the other side. And it's a learning curve. And I come back better. It's an experience. It's a challenge. It's a test. We're going to have them. Here's the main thing. Like, this is how I try and look at everything that happens. Yes, this has happened to me and this sucks. But on the Friday when this happened, the next Sunday I was supposed to go rock climbing. And me rock climbing is like watching a gorilla try to do ballet. I muscle my way up those walls and I jump frivolously for holds and grips, especially bouldering because all you do is fall like eight feet and smack a big pad and laugh about it. So maybe on that Sunday, I would have gone for a jump. I'd have gone for a, a, a big leap, grabbed something and really ripped this muscle right off the bone. And that's how I always like to see things. But the universe gave me the lesser of the two ways it could have come out. And that's how I'm seeing it. And that's how I try and look at anything that happens that's bad. And honestly, everything that, anything that's ever happened at the moment in the time has seemed like the end, like the end of the world, the most worst thing that could happen in that time. And it's always, 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 always led to something even better afterwards. Always, always, without fail. And that will happen if you get your head back up, if you get your ass off the sofa, if you keep moving forward and you keep looking at opportunities that are come your way. It's when you stay down, when you've been put down, that you start to spiral because you are missing opportunities that will still present themselves. So thank you all again for all the lovely positive messages and uh, we will get, well, I'll get through this and hopefully you guys will learn something from it along the way. Because I'm going to miss being able to do the things that I'm used to doing with just my right hand, you know, like picking up literally anything, opening and closing doors and fridges, doing your hair, driving a car, putting your seatbelt on, wiping your butt. His left has taken over and it's weird. It's like there's a stranger doing it. Chopsticks, catching things. I'm a dropper, but I'm a good catcher. That phone is definitely not going to live very long. Whacking kids. Not mine, obviously. I don't have any. So just strangers, kids, just, you know, when no one's looking. Throwing kittens, hitting people in the face with haddocks, whipping people with your belt at the petrol station when they're being a little bit slow because you just can't get that karate chopping melons. It is currently Saturday evening. In the next video, I'll update you exactly what's happening. If the operation is going ahead, hopefully I can get hold of the CT scans as well to show you guys some of that. And uh, that's it. That's all I can tell you from this point. This is where we're at. It's going to be leg day every day. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. There's always something we can improve. There's always something we can do. you got to make your own energy and get up, get out there and just do the damn thing. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. It's not going to be uh, too long. It's going to be updated in a couple of days. And in the meantime, when I can't train, we'll be doing some other things like uh, a tour through the My Protein Factory. We'll be going through some uh, any questions or big subjects you want to know about supplementation and all that kind of jazz. And anything else, hit me up in the comment section. Uh, for subjects you want me to cover, what I can do this, and we can do it a little bit like this where um, I just sit and chat with you guys about what you want to know, and we'll pop up little things on the screen that help you understand things as we go. I enjoy it. I quite like this. It's like doing the podcast. And if you haven't tuned into the podcast, make sure to subscribe. It really does help us to get that new thing up and running. And we will also have videos now with the podcast on Spotify. So you can not only listen on Spotify, you will be able to watch us. And we've been given early access to that, which is amazing. I'm going to go and enjoy what's left of this evening and uh, hopefully have some good news. Fingers crossed. <laughs>